Our final talk before the break uh, will be given by Kevin Hackett from the United States Department of Agriculture. The talk is on 5,000 insect genomes, the I-5K project. Kevin? Yes, I stand between everybody and the break. That's good. Okay. So I-5K is the international effort to sequence 5,000 arthropod genomes. It began in 2011 with a letter to the journal Science. The goals are to sequence and analyze the genomes of all arthropod species that are important to worldwide agriculture and food safety, medicine, and energy production. All arthropod species used as models in biology, the most abundant arthropods in world ecosystems, and for evolution, representatives of every major branch of arthropod phylogeny. As such, high five goals generally parallel the goals of the Earth Biogenome Project. Arthropods are highly diverse in genome size and body size, that is DNA amount, from a microscopic mite that lives in the trachea of mites, uh, sorry, of bees, uh, to crickets as big as small birds. And arthropods are also diverse in heterozygosity and repetitive DNA. How to tackle such a diverse group? We decided early on that a pilot project would be needed to, before a full project could be launched. This became the I-5K pilot project at the Baylor College of Medicine. I-5K currently consists of the I-5K pilot and several important efforts that are associated with the I-5K. Today, I'll be describing those efforts. Funding to date has come from diverse sources. For example, the NHGRI model organism program at NIH supports I-5K pilot. USDA Agriculture Research Service supports both the Ag 100 pest and the Cornome projects. The Cornome is also funded by the Smithsonian. USDA ARS also supports the I-5K workspace at the U.S. National Agricultural Library. INRA supports the project in France. The Chinese Academy of Sciences supports the ANT project. For, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the China Agricultural University and BGI and Next Omics support the Bee Roots project and the University of Memphis and NSF support the Beetle Project. As for funding needs, we expect that I-5K will cost between 25 and $100 million. I think <clears throat> the main question we should be asking really is though is not the cost, but uh, what will be the scientific investment in our collective future. I've quoted, uh, taken from Yuval Harari's latest book, 21 Lessons for a 21st Century here, if the future of humanity is decided in our absence, we will not be exempt from the consequences. This is unfair, but who said that history is fair? So, I-5K. Existing, exists as a formal coordinating group in an annotation site at NAL, anchoring a diverse network of arthropod genomics efforts worldwide. For example, I-5K plays a major role as an integral part of the Arthropod Genomics Consortium, which will hold its next annual symposium in June in Manhattan, Kansas, organized by I-5K co-chair Sue Brown. Please join us for the best arthropod genomics and the best barbecue in the world, not necessarily <laughs> together. <laughs> to show the spirit of the I-5K community at the Arthropod Genomics Symposium, I collected a few of the logos that Taxel communities made for the projects, artists among oh. our scientists, Dio Wilson's consilience at work, perhaps. Uh, play is part of the work. As another example of community spirit, I will use the USDA effort to organize its arthropod genomics research into a program that includes 49 researchers located, located across the United States. They join in multidisciplinary efforts with discipline shown in the upper right to sequence invasive insects, for example, sorghum aphids shown here left and western bean cutworms shown here right. They also conduct webinars, develop major training workshops, and do peer-to-peer -peer training, including developing YouTube videos and workbooks. The community is connected by an internal site, SciNet, and have published major review papers uh, on, for instance, the uh, emergence of gene, edit gene editing tools. Now I'll discuss projects that most closely self-identify as I-5K. The I-5K pilot is led by Stephen Richards Fringy, who is here at this uh, symposium. He's at the uh, University of California at Davis right now. This project sequenced 28 high interest genomes shown here from black widow and brown recluse spiders to scorpions, 
Household pests such as the bed bug, cockroaches, some primitive insects such as bristletail, damselflies, complete metamorphosis beetles and fly pests, and beneficial insects such as the ladybird beetle and parasitoid wasps. Next, the Cornome Project led by Brad Coates and Jay Evans at USDA ARS, collaborating with John Coddington at the Smithsonian. The goal is to evaluate 10 non-arthropod, uh, non-target arthropod genomes for RNAi vulnerability. If we're gonna use gene silencing for pest control, we need to make sure that first, the target genes are not present in the non-targets. The eight arthropods that have so far been partially sequenced or highlighted in green are mostly beneficial hemipteran bugs and beetles, a lacewing, a harvestman spider, and a caddisfly. INRA in France has teamed with BGI in China and labs in Germany and Chile to do a project to sequence two major pests in Europe, grape phylloxera and the African cotton leaf worm, and, and associated hymenopter and parasitoids. The purpose is to determine host parasite relationships, information that will inform biocontrol. My agency, USDA ARS, recently got approval to a project called Ag 100 Pests uh, to sequence the genomes of the top 100 agricultural pests in the United States. This might include potential invaders that are pests outside our country. We have received over 300 nominations and are currently developing a community-based system to prioritize them. The spotted lanternflies is an early contender. In fact, it will be done. It mocks the wine versus beer debate by actually relishing both grapes and hops <laughs> and threatening our Christmas trees. Uh, so as part of this project, we have invested in a functional annotation pipeline specifically tailored to arthropods through a cooperative agreement with the University of Arizona. The pipeline will be open source and support the annotation of go terms and keg pathways for gene sets. Now I'll mention three projects that are associated with the greater I5K community. The first, the Global Ant Genomics Alliance, aims to sequence 200 to 300 species of ants. It's led by Goji Jang and, and uh, Yus Boonsma at the University of Copenhagen and Lucas Schrader at the University of Munster with a large number of collaborators. The goal is to create a comprehensive data set of the world's ant genomic diversity. The next is the Roots Project, a US and China effort led by Gene Robinson, Xin Zhao, Amy Toth, and Karen Kapheim. The goal is to determine the roots of sociality in bees and wasps. 50 bee and 50 wasp species will be sequenced. Finally, the Beetle Project is led by Dwayne McKenna at the University of Memphis and has a goal of sequencing the genomes of 200 beetle species of economic, ecological, or evolutionary interest. Well, I already covered the ambitions of each project summarized here. Like other slides in my presentation, this uh, information is available upon request. This slide shows the arthropod species sequence to date. While 366 arthropod species appear in NCBI's database, there's great variability in depth of sequencing. Of the ones most associated with I5K, the pilot has completed 28 species, the cornome 8, INRA 4, ants 30, bees 30, and beetles 43. We're in a good place now. We, with sequencing costs having declined to an affordable level, commensurate with the challenges posed by the tremendous birth diversity of arthropods, which represent, represent more than 80% of all described eukaryotes, uh, at least the ones we can see, I expect sequenced arthropods to increase greatly, especially with the support of the Earth Biogenome Project. As for quality standards for arthropods in NCBI, there are poor to excellent assemblies, most based on short reads. Context sizes are as high as 26 megabase, with scaffolds as high as 410 megabase. It's a huge range. I've listed the strategies of the different communities here Bottom line going into the future is exemplified by the Ag 100 pest projects. For that, we see the Earth Biogenome Project published goal of 2.3 QV40 as reachable using long reads. To explain, this slide shows the overall quality of arthropod genomes deposited in NCBI. There are 41 arthropod genomes that are rated at the quality st st state that EBP has proposed. That is a 2.3 quality or above, context of 100 KB to one megabase and scaffolds of about one to 10 megabase. 
was, while all of these do not meet the MAP status and QV base quality status that is desired by ABP, we expect that these goals are now att attainable with long reads and the ability to sequence smaller input DNA. Alternatively, for very small insects, at least immediately, we will likely rely on pooled insects in 10X. Overall, there are 100 plus assembled and annotated genomes plus significant transcriptomic sequencing in NCBI. Data from both the Cornome and Ag100 pests will be archived in NCBI and also placed in the I5K workspace genome database run by Monica Polchow and Chris Childers shown here. Most I5K pilot species are in the workspace as well. For I5K, the, the websites and GitHub are shown in yellow. We already have 70 genomes and 15,000 curated gene models in the I5K workspace at NAL, which also does webinars, tutorials, and training. We were asked to share I5K publications. You can write them down quickly here. Uh, I'll show in this in the next slide. I will not discuss them further other than that they show that their papers about our database, best practices, review papers, journal articles, which are generally in high quality journals. The I5K pilot has also submitted a paper to Nature. For major discoveries, many would argue that large-scale genome sequencing efforts are primarily hypothesis-generating tools. For example, the I5K pilot paper generated a new phylogenetic tree of about 70 species that were analyzed, resulting in a database of gene families and protein domains at each node in the tree. From this finding, examples of possible questions are, why does the last lepidopter and common ancestor have so many emergent gene families, over 1,000? And why do spiders show surprisingly high rates of DNA methylation? Well, besides generating hypotheses, and despite this being an embryonic field, there have also been some major discoveries based on arthropod sequencing. For example, the silkworm genome sequence was used to discover a major new insecticide resistance mechanism shown to be widespread in crop pests, causing resistance to the widely used bioinsecticide Bt. The honeybee genome sequence was a foundation of comparisons of neural expression between socially unresponsive honeybees and autistic humans, which revealed common genomic underpinnings in such behaviors, confirming predictions based on behavioral science. Two migratory insects, the migratory locust and monarch butterfly, have given us insight into gene networks associated with natural selection for migration. The Heliconius butterfly genome resulted in the discovery of the role of supergenes in wing pattern mimicry, <laughs> evolutionary adaptation, and mechanisms of ecological and hybrid speciation in animals. And the genome sequence of the southern cattle tick led to the discovery of a cattle tick vaccine. For beetles feeding on plants, the Beetle Project has discovered genes associated with the ability to process wood, as shown here in the study of the Asian longhorn beetle. By the way, that's a $670 billion threat to U.S. maple trees. Put that in context of what we're asking for here. The genes are for an arsenal of glycoside hydrolases, plant cell wall degrading enzymes, and digestive proteases, as well as genes for detoxification, some obtained from microbes via lateral gene transfer that facilitate plant feeding. Since time is short, I will just note that I have listed more discoveries here for anyone that would want to see them. Here is a listing of some of the PIs associated with the projects that I've described. The collaborators are, of course, too extensive to list. In conclusion, basing my thoughts on Neil Ferguson's The Square in the Tower, his study of the societal forces that bring about large-scale community change, we will need both bottom-up networking and top-down leadership to obtain our collective goals. At I5K, we're very happy to play a role to help in helping to bring about just such a transformative moment. Thank you. <laughs>